The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. everybody welcome to ask for candy where we talk about healing self-care love sex relationships and what it takes to be amazing on the daily who i am is candace harper love coach.com honey and my purpose with this podcast is to create healthy romantic relationships all around the world through self-love soul connections and sweetness now before we get to that we're here with our production partner my brian from solivity magazine What's up, Candy? Hi, honey. How you doing? I am wonderful. I am ready to, for this show. Y'all, y'all better buckle up. Ah, you ready for the y'all show? Buckle up. Now, when we're doing this show, for the live people who are watching live, and if you listen to this, we're gearing up for a little holiday action, right? We were talking about that, how we're we're not celebrating what the holiday was originally intended for, <laughs> <laughs> but we do take it as an opportunity. What did you say, Sunday dinner on Thursday night? Exactly, right? It's just, it's just another family get-together. Right. As Black and Indigenous people, we get to enjoy each other and, and be grateful and enjoy good food. And, you know, for all of you out there who are doing so, hopefully you have a wonderful, wonderful time. I know it's rough. It's rough these days with COVID. COVID is kind of putting a little bit of a wrench into it. But that's okay. We can still eat. Those of us who can eat. And if you know anybody who can't eat, hopefully you're out there helping those people to eat. I feel like this is an opportunity for us to really show up in the world in a very loving and generous way. This is the time. It's holiday time. It means it's time to be loving with everybody. Don't you agree, Brian? I absolutely positively do. Right. So, you know, you don't have to have turkey, you know. But- <laughs> you, have to, you know, you can have some. I won't say McDonald's, but if that's all you can afford, then right. you have some McDonald's. You could have a can of soup. I thought you were about to say, you know that saying, you don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, you don't have to have turkey, but you got to have something. <laughs> get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> But no, definitely, if you're out there, take care of people. If you have, take care of people who don't have. This is a a very uh, precarious time we're living in. But please, by all means, enjoy this holiday and, you know, and enjoy it for what it is for you. So we are live every Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern right here on all your social media outlets. We're all over the place, aren't we, Brian? Like YouTube, we got the Facebook, we're on the Twitter. You can definitely find us. You can watch us at Solivity.com on Solivity TV and subscribe to Solivity Magazine on YouTube. And, you know, that way you can get alerted when we go live. You can subscribe, all that good stuff. And then also there's an audio broadcast of Ask for Candy on Anchor, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio. I tend to listen to the show in the morning as I'm walking. So if you're out and about and you just want to listen, you can do that as well. And you can email us at askforcandypodcast at at gmail.com. If you have comments, you have questions, you have suggestions for things you want me to talk about, things that you want me to stop talking about, I can't guarantee that I will, but you can always <laughs> send me a comment and tell me what you think and you know we can talk about it. So for those of you who are new, for almost nine years, I have been a relationship coach, a workshop facilitator, and now you can go on to mywellbeing.com to work with me one-on-one, and it's sliding scale, just so you know. I'm also a professional matchmaker with Luma, a luxury matchmaking service that brings high-end singles together to find their perfect love. And all of these things are me living into my purpose, the purpose of loving myself unconditionally and inspiring others to do the same, using our romantic lives as a portal, an inspiration, a catalyst, if you will, to our highest self. 
Now, relationship coaching is my zone of genius, and the best part about it is that week to week, I get to grow and learn as I interact with hundreds of people around the most intimate parts of their lives, and I get to take people on their journey from caterpillar to butterfly, from unhappy with their love lives to or their partners to ecstatic. I get to teach people how to get out of their own way and tap into love as a limitless resource, and I do that using tools like EFT, RTT, hypnotherapy, and my own coaching curriculum. Curriculum. Well, I don't know why I can't speak tonight, Brian. You know what it is? Did I tell you that I... Huh? Did I scotch? (laughs) Well, that's every time (laughs) now. But I started doing these uh, clear aligners. Did I tell you about that? Oh, yeah, you did. I'm not going to say their name yet because I feel like they should be one of our sponsors. But I started doing these clear aligners. It's already working. Wow. Yeah. I feel like I. It's so amazing. Those of you who are out there, because I actually, for at least two years, kind of toggled back and forth of whether I was going to do the clear aligner thing. Because I'll tell you, if I'm honest and I'm truthful, I had braces when I was like 12 or 13 years old. And I wore them for two years. And then when it came time to wear the retainer, I didn't wear it. And so for those of you who are out there, if you're young and you have braces, wear your retainer because as you're an adult, your teeth will go back. Did you know that? Did you know that, Brian? Did you ever have braces? Uh, I I didn't have braces. My brother had braces, but I do know that your teeth never, really never stop growing. They never stop growing and they will shift around if you don't do like do the right apparatus. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Right. But back then I thought I was too cool for school. I was very much a rebel. And so, you know, here I am a a few decades later and, you know, wanting to straighten things back out again. So I decided to do these clear aligners and it's been they're they're like a miracle. It's been wonderful, but it is affecting my speech. Like I don't have them on right now because I wanted to be able to speak clearly for the show. Obviously, it worked because I'm stumbling over words. But <laughs> but what it does is it makes me sound a little bit like like a little rascal. Like I have a little little bit of a lisp <laughs> when I have them. And you know that sound that people make uh-huh. when it's like it's uh, a lisp and it's. Yeah, and it's a little bit slurry. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, it's so cute. It's cute. It's cute. But you know, when people don't expect it, they're like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> they're like, um, okay. Yeah, like okay. Yeah. So, whatever. It it is what it is. I might stumble over some words, but y'all will always get my meaning. Those of you who listen regularly, you know me. You know what I'm saying. So tonight we have a really exciting topic. I'm excited for this topic because I'm going to be sharing some stuff about my own um, journey with this. But I was, you know, talking to a client the other day and we were just talking about some stuff that she's been through. And then I was talking to the ladies in my healing circle as well. And what keeps reoccurring is this idea of struggle love. Right? How many of us out there are in struggle love? And it, and, uh, right? And it came to me today. Like, it's like something that, that we fall into as if, like, we don't know, like, what happened? Like, and so the topic tonight, the title is Who Signed Me Up for Struggle Love? <laughs> How did I get registered with this? What, what, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Who put me in this life? Like, what the? <laughs> right? Who signed me up? So you know how it can sometimes be. Whether we're in or out of a relationship, we get into like a blame and shame cycle where we try to determine how in the world we ended up on the National Registry for Wrong Relationships, right? It's like somewhere our name is that you're going to have bad relationships. You're going to pick badly. You're going to be with all the wrong people. And a lot of people, amazingly enough, feel like that. And I noticed through matchmaking, you know, when I'm coaching my matchmaking clients, when I'm coaching my coaching clients, one thing that is like a common story is just sort of a a hard luck romantic life story, right? And it makes sense because, you know, you figure if you have past relationships, it means that they didn't work out. And we always assume that that must mean something negative, right? But think about this. If if you feel like your romantic history has been a difficult challenge or an uphill climb, 
or if you look back and you can identify several times that your heart was broken, and we're going to talk about like the heart being broken, or if you have, you feel like you have, you know, the one that got away or maybe multiple ones that got away. Tonight's show is especially for you and it's for me too, because for the longest time I was in the story of being the girl in the bad relationship who had bad relationships and just, you know, like it was a a pattern of mine. That was my belief, right? And for all of us, all of us who have or are settling for that struggle love, that's who this show is for tonight. And so, like I said, I was coaching a client the other day and she was talking about how every man that she has ever picked was somehow unavailable. Right? Yeah. And, you know, the quick sort of diagnosis of that is, oh, yeah, you must have been unavailable. So you attracted unavailability. Yes, we know that to be true. If you've been listening to the show, you know that that's that's where this goes. But there's there's an even deeper layer. There's an even deeper level to this. So she up to and including even the most recent who she says broke her heart, because no matter how hard she worked to, to make it work, things still broke down. So you have to listen to like the clues within that. So I every man I ever picked was unavailable. And no matter how hard I worked to make it work. So just that I'm approaching it, that I have to work hard in order to make it work. Just that belief alone gives you a lot of clues as to how I might be approaching my love life and why I'm experiencing the same thing over and over again. And we'll talk about that more as well. So this is why we have to be willing to question our narrative, right? Are love and relationships really hard work or are we all at varying degrees of settling for struggle love? Like are some of us like, you know, in a little bit of a struggle and we're dealing with it, you know, maybe in therapy or whatever. Some of us are in a major struggle where everything's a big drama. We're calling the police and we're having all kinds of like, you know, domestic situations and, and, you know, things are always awry. Some of us are on our own and single and just in a sad luck story about our, our love life. Like we're all in varying degrees of struggle love. Right. So how do we even know if we have signed up and registered for struggle love? How do you know you're you're in one of those varying degrees? You know, Brian, that I I, I have a list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is it why is it that I keep hearing a variation of this song? Struggle love. Struggle love. Yeah. Oh we <laughs> That jungle love. <laughs> Think I wanna know you, know you. That struggle love. Yeah. Oh we oh we oh. Girl, I wanna show you, show you how hard it can be. Right? Absolutely. It totally it does deserve struggle love does deserve its own song. So if you're a songwriter out there, by all means. We'll have to create that. Right? The struggle love song. So yeah, I you know, you know how I do. There are a number of ways to recognize whether we have signed up and registered for struggle love. There are just a number of ways to recognize and and realize and just get aware. And if you listen regularly, you know that awareness is the thing. It's not about you know flipping a light switch and being perfect in your transformation, being above reproach or setting yourself up on some kind of pedestal where you have to be perfect and never make a mistake. It is all about just being willing to be self-aware, look at what I'm doing, watch what I'm doing in a way that, that I am observing rather than making myself wrong or um, wallowing in my mistakes or my victimhood. It's like, let me just see who I'm being and how I'm creating what's going on around me. So let's go through The list, the list of questions. Let's start with the list. The list list of questions to to figure out if you are on the registry, the struggle love registry. If you have signed up and gotten yourself, uh, you know, uh, registered and involved in the list for of people who are in struggle love. Number one, do you have a person in your life who you are trying to fix? Right. So if you are in a romantic relationship right now. And you are trying to fix that person. Are you trying to make them go to therapy? And maybe they're not that interested and, you know, you're trying to force it and make it happen. Are you sending them links to online materials that might help them be better? Which that's something I used to do. (laughs) 
<laughs> and I used to think, what, what, what'd you say, Brian? Guilty as charged. Guilt, right? Uh-huh. But I used to think I was being so stealth about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, hey, baby, you should check out this video. You know, and try to, like, get get him on board, you know, with somebody who's, who's who maybe the way they were delivering their personal growth message would be in a way that he could hear it. I would be, like, trolling YouTube, looking for people that would be people he could connect to. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to be taking care of my own business, right? Right. Distraction. <laughs> Distraction. Yeah, I'm supposed to be looking for people that I can connect to so I can grow myself. But I'm like, I'm going to I'm gonna find somebody who's going to help him with his weed addiction, somebody who's going to help him with, you know, who he's being and how he treats me, someone who's going to teach him how to talk to me better. Like, I was in fix it, fix it, fix it mode, right? Yeah. Are you Are you begging them to stop or start doing something on your behalf? So that's another thing that we don't, it's very insidious because we don't realize that it's trying to fix that person. But when we are consistently trying to make someone start or stop doing something because it's something that bothers us, so we're trying to get them to adjust it, like that's that signing up for struggle love. <laughs> right? That's how you know you you are put you have put yourself on the registry. Because it's 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 that futile thing where we gotta change we gotta change that person. If I could just change you doing that, this could be so much better. If I could just fix you rather than, you know, look inward for why things land on me the oh, way I they do. I love you so much. Now, would you change me? Right? We say that all the time, but ex- that's exactly what it is. And that's struggle love. Like, if you feel like you need to change a person, if you don't love them, and this doesn't mean that you agree with everything they do, but if you don't love them for who they are and how they are, you feel like you'd have to change them or you need to change them, you are setting yourself up for struggle love because they will not change unless they want to change. Right? Yeah. Do you criticize them, their lifestyle, their choices, their friends, their family on a regular basis? If you are with someone who you are are trying to fix and you try to do it through criticism. Now, I don't know about you, Brian. I mean, I'm somebody who if I let myself because I have an inner perfectionist who when she tries to sit at the head of the table, I tell her, thank you very much. But you can go and sit at the kitty table (laughs) while I take over. And, you know, this doesn't have to be so perfect. I don't do it, you know, all the time. Sometimes she do, she, do, she is in charge. But one thing about that perfectionist is that she's very critical, not only of me, but uh, of other people as well, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But it never feels good. Like being able to criticize someone else or um, judge someone else or their choices, their friends, their family, all of that stuff. It's not like the aftermath of that feels fruitful, Right? It never is. is. And if you do it to that person, they don't feel better. And and you don't ultimately feel better having criticized them. You've just basically kind of like dumped your your perfectionism onto them, right? Right, right. It is it is the the little secret is it is nothing more than a black hole. Yeah. It is. If that if that person let's say they do change that part to your to whatever you want them to it is just a matter of time maybe even within the second the next moment that they make that decision to change that you're going to find something else oh yeah totally i love that black hole analogy it's like it's going from one thing to another to another to another because it's you you're the one generating that judgment that criticism right it's us We're always going to be finding it, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's that was just number one. I know. <laughs> so we're trying to get y'all off the list. We're trying to get y'all off the list. So, it, you know, if you recognize yourself in any of that, and I have rec- recognized myself in a lot of that over time, you know you are signing up for the struggle. And here's the thing, too. I want to say that it's not about making you wrong for signing up for the struggle, because often we sign up for the struggle because that's what we come from, that's what was modeled for us, and that's what we're used to. Yep, and it's our way to grow, right? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, if you are recognizing that you have signed up for the struggle, don't go into like, you know, a depression about it or anything like that. You don't have to beat yourself up or go down in the dumps. It's just that, like I was talking about, it's that self-awareness. It's an opportunity to practice something new, to have a new experience, right? Number two, to know if you have signed up and are registered for struggle love Are you chasing after someone who is not showing signs of wanting to be caught? (laughs) And this happens. This is real. It happens, you know, for people well into their 60s and 70s. I can tell you from my matchmaking experience. That it, it, you know, it's not a, a, a thing where you, as you mature and get older, if you haven't healed that part of you that needs to do that, it's not like it just goes away on its own because you've gotten older. Like older people do it just like young people do it, right? They're wondering why someone didn't text them back. They're, you know, doing all of the calling, the texting, the planning, the trying, you know, all of that in the relationship. And you got to ask yourself, would there be any relationship if you weren't doing all those things? Because that's how you know. That you're chasing after someone who who's not showing any signs of wanting to be caught. <laughs> and, you know, it's like I said, it's not something to be, beat yourself up about. It's just recognizing I am signing up for the struggle. Here I am wanting this person because it's hard to get them and because I have to chase them. Now, with that said... I recognize that there there can be some gender differences with that because I do believe that biologically that that um, the male gender tends to be more interested in some sort of challenge, right? Some level of challenge, uh-huh. right? But there is that dynamic where it's like the difference between someone providing you a challenge and somebody being really definitive that they are a no. Right. So if you're recognizing, if you're willing to recognize whether someone is giving you a definitive no over whether they're just, you know, playing hard to get or giving you a little bit of a challenge being, you know, they're mysterious or whatever, like a little self-awareness will have you able to recognize that. Right. And if someone's giving you a definitive no and you keep going and keep going and keep going in an obsessive way, you got to be able to say, like, am I just signing on for struggle? Ask yourself, is, is it something having to do with my relationship with my mother? Did my mama leave me at some point where I feel like because this woman doesn't want me that that, you know, it, my ego is so bruised that if I don't get her that that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a loser, or I'm a failure or it means that I'm invaluable invaluable is that a word or that I'm not valuable. So and for women, you know, I believe that that. And I, you know, I, I, I'm loath to genderize, but I still do believe in certain things when it comes to biology. And for women, I think it's very masculine energy for us to change. And I don't mean to be binary either. It's however you identify, but it's very masculine energy to chase, 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 chase. And it's usually the thing that will put someone off of us. Yeah. Right. If you are interested in someone who does come from their masculine energy and then here you are in your masculine energy trying to chase them down and force them to love you or or force a relationship with you, then you're signing on for that struggle. That's a struggle to sign on. And I've done it. Right. But, you know, lions are so much more adept at it. (laughs) that is true because gazelles get caught pretty often i mean you know and but here's the thing too you can chase somebody down and catch them but then what do you end up catching somebody that you are gonna have to force and chase down and you know cajole and convince and pull into your life over and over and over again right i see what you're doing yeah so this is so so when they do that then they see number one on your list right (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Like, I got you. Now, now I got to fix you now. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. Mm, 
Candy. Right? And Don't. some of us out here are real, real powerful as far as being able to convince somebody into our life. I'm, I consider myself to be very powerful around that. And, you know, there's been a couple people I've convinced into my life or people who've convinced me into theirs. But the ones that I convinced into my life, I had to spend the rest of the time with them convincing them to be a certain way and fixing them and trying to make them do things in order to make it work. Because I was all about, you know, I was going to force this thing to happen. So we can do it. It's possible, but it's signing up for that struggle love. (laughs) Right? That's what you're signing on for. And that's what I signed on for when I was doing that. I signed on for that struggle, that need to have to like keep convincing someone to be in it. Right? And when people did that with me, that's what they were signing up for, that unavailable struggle. Number three. Are we ready for number three? Let's do number three. Let's do number three. Are you pining away for someone long after it's over or someone that you never really had a full relationship with, but you developed an infatuation or a deep obsession or what you call a deep love? You feel like you fell in love with them and it's long over. They they don't interact with you. Do you have a lot of resentments and regrets about them? Do you tend to miss them and want them more as time goes by rather than less? Do you have a lot of emotional energy when you think about them or speak about them, but they're not in touch with you? That pining away for someone, someone who who is not involved with us in that way or not showing any signs of being involved with us in that way. That, um, you know, looking back on the time that we had with them, sometimes we did have a relationship with them and we look back on it and we, you know, have a lot of emotional energy and we go back into that, that, uh, you know, my heart was broken and I did, I was in a 13 year relationship. It took years for me to get out of the story of I've been through this heartbreak and, you know, it was supposed, he was the one who got away and I loved him so much. And he was the one of my life, the soulmate of my life. Like I, I kept building the story as I got further and further away from it. Right. Right. Just pining away. But what I was doing was I was choosing the struggle. I was choosing the, the feelings that would be the most heart wrenching and negative feelings around it. But it required me to make up a story about it. So I'm not even in touch with him and I'm making him, I'm, you know, making him into this. It's like when people pass away, sometimes we, we over, what's the word I'm looking for, Brian, when we, when we put them on a pedestal and we kind of, uh, uh, um, magnify their importance. We make them, we make them much better and more angelic than they actually were. (laughs) You know, we, we begin to fantasize who that person idolize. That's it. Exactly. So it's an idolization of this person. And it really is a choice that we make. And there's a reason we make the choice, you know, like whatever we're telling ourselves about not wanting the relationship to have failed or, you know, that it meant that we weren't good enough or that, you know, our feelings were invalid. If we let it go, we can come up with lots of reasons why we make that choice. But to idolize someone who's no longer in our lives and just, you know, desire them and want them and just feel like, oh, so heart wrenched about it. All of that is the signing on for struggle love. It's like I'm buying into this and I'm going to allow myself to go there because we do have the power over our, our thoughts and beliefs that dictate our emotions. Right. So if I choose that, I'm going to believe that this person was everything I ever needed, but it didn't work out. And meanwhile, they're long gone. (laughs) They're, they're long, long gone. And here I am, you know, in a place of like, that was all I was ever going to get. They were everything that I needed. I don't know if I'm ever going to find it again. I'm signing on for that struggle. Love. Uh, uh, uh. That's that, that's that love that, that, you never like like you will block mm-hmm. any really great experience from coming into your life. Absolutely, <laughs> because you you you're still after the one that that got, got away, away or 
or that or that might have even broken your heart, but you know that that was still the one for you. Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's exactly what we do, and I deal with it with clients all the time. With that old story of that old relationship that was mm-hmm. the one that tore out my heart, tore it out. And you're right; it blocks everybody we'll else. Try again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And if I do try again, I got a whole lot of you know negative reasons for why I know it's not going to work, and I'm still right. hung up on that person. So I'm yeah. Just Right? But see how the struggle snowballs? Yep. So the, the struggle just gets bigger and bigger because I'm pining yep. away for this person. Now I don't have room for a new person, but I really want a new person. But every time a new person comes around, I let all the old stuff come up. And so the, my struggle love ball gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it swallows me up. Mm. You got that love, 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 love. Struggle love. love, love. <laughs> Exactly. Don't get into struggle love, y'all. <laughs> right? So we got a couple more, and then I'm going to talk about how to turn it around and turn it into ease. But should we take a right. little commercial break, my Brian? Yeah, we can do a little commercial break. And then yeah. we can come back. We'll give the people a breather. Let them take it in for a little bit. All right. Now. All right. And we're back. And we're talking about how do we know if we have signed up? For Struggle Love, signed up and registered. Oh, we, oh, we, oh. Right, Struggle Love. How do we know? How do we know we signed up? So I went through three so far and the questions to ask yourself. Do you have a person in your life you're trying to fix? Are you chasing after someone who is not showing signs of wanting to be caught? Are you pining away for someone long after a relationship is over or even an, an interaction or you know a phase of dating them or whatever? And then now number four, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. are you walking around saying and pretending that you want an easy, loving relationship, but everything that you're doing actually aligns with the above things that I talked about? <laughs> right? So it happens all the time. I have people who they will give me, because I always ask the question, especially when I first meet clients. What is it that we're creating? What am I partnering with you to create? So tell me about the vision. What does this relationship look like? Who are you in this relationship? Who is this person that is your partner? How do you see it? What do you see in your mind? What are you dreaming of? What do you desire? And they always say that they want it to be easy, a partnership, a friendship. They want to be loved and accepted for exactly who they are. They want... um you know, for it to be fun and there to be joy and happiness and laughter and all of that stuff they say. And then the moment we get into the process, they're ready for the struggle. They're impatient. They lose faith. They're critical. They're, you know, just everything that that actually makes the whole process a lot less fun and a lot less of all the things that they want, that they say that they want. So another question to ask yourself around, are you saying one thing, pretending that you want it to be easy and loving and doing something different? Do you want people more when they are unavailable or if it feels like you have to work for them? So if you find yourself tending to want people more when they're unavailable, then you are signing on for that struggle love, right? You're out of alignment with what you say you want. Do you say you want a loving, sustainable relationship, but when someone shows you genuine interest and kindness, you get turned off? And that that's a thing. So I have so many clients, especially matchmaking clients, who are like, I want somebody who's sweet and romantic and loving, and I'll send them out on a date with somebody who's going to offer all of that and they offer all of that and they say, Oh, he was just too like, I don't know. He was too nice. He was, he was too, you know, like, I don't know. It's just overboard. He was asking me questions about myself, you know, like, (laughs) right. And it's crazy to me. And you know, the way that men often do it is they'll say, Oh, I want loving intimacy, a loving, sustainable relationship. But, you know, I looked at her. I didn't feel it. She wasn't, uh, yeah. she wasn't sexy enough. She wasn't hot enough. You know, so... Yep, yeah, that's the signing on. The signing on for struggle love. Like, I say I want one thing, 
but the way that I behave, the way that I show up and the way that I act gets me something completely different. Right. And also I think a lot of times people who say they want easy, they want a great love. They're very avoidant of anything that comes easy. So if it does feel easy, it feels very uncomfortable for people who are, who are in that state of saying they want it, but then acting in a different way. And that's one of the main ways that we sign up for struggle love is being out of integrity with our word, saying we want one thing, but our actions speaking something else. And so number five, are you in an argument for your limits and your limiting beliefs? So, you know, I always talk about it. I'll say it over and over again. Our experience is a product of what we believe right? And so if we've had a number of relationships, like I said, I used to walk around, you know, being the bad relationship girl and talking about how bad my relationship was and looking back on past relationships as if they were bad, something was wrong with them. And just that set of beliefs, rather than focusing on what was great about my encounters with other people, what it taught me, what I learned, what I gained, which was so much more than what I lost, Rather than that, I was looking at years I wasted or, you know, that it didn't work out or that it didn't end in, in, you know, ultimately us getting married or they didn't change the way that I wanted them to change. Like focusing on all that and being limited by those beliefs and assuming that anyone else that you run into is going to be the same. That's that registration for struggle love. So, you know, anytime anyone dares to introduce a thought or belief that may be contrary to the way that you envision love, you stand firm on your negative opinions. If you do that, you know that you are signing on for struggle love. If you're somebody who is willing to be in a fight with somebody about how uh, men can't be trusted or about how, you know, women are narcissistic or whatever it is, you're ready to fight for those opinions and those beliefs. You are signed on to the Struggle Love Registry, honey, because you believe what you believe so hard and you will manifest exactly what you believe. You have a mountain of evidence that proves that every relationship you've ever been in was bad. I had a mountain of evidence. I could tell you all the reasons for why the past relationships were bad when I was in that struggle love around my relationships. You want to believe people can't be trusted. You set limits on your love life by your very thoughts. And we get so used to doing it that we don't even recognize that it's happening anymore. So those are five ways that we sign on for that struggle love. But there's good news. Did you know that there was good news, Brian? Yay! If you answered yes to any of the of the above, it does mean that you have certainly signed up for Struggle Love. Your name is on the National Registry. That is true. And, you know, it's time to just get an awareness about it and get an acceptance about it, that it is what it is. However, it can be changed. And it can be changed through awareness and just a practice and a willingness to to believe and think and perceive differently, which we all have the power to do. We get so caught up in thinking that it's the world that's supposed to indicate how we react and how we behave. And it's the external that's supposed to determine what we're capable of and, you know, whether we can say and do the things we want to do. We get so caught up in wanting to believe that. But actually, We can change our minds. We can decide. We can choose. We can arrange our thoughts and beliefs in a way that actually works and in a way that gets us on the easy love list. Don't you want to be on the easy love list, Brian? I feel like you're on the easy. Are you on the easy love list? You better say yes. I I was going to say. (laughs) (laughs) Sasha may be listening, so you better say yes. Yeah, I'm all the way on it. (laughs) <laughs> right? And by easy, I don't mean that you never have a conflict. But there is a difference between, um, you know, having ease in that you you are in relationship with someone for whom you know you're on the same page and that you're working towards the same thing. And you may not always approach it the same way, but because you are on the easy love list, you can accept that your person doesn't always approach things the same way that you do. You can be okay with how they approach things and you can navigate yourself in a way that is loving around whoever they are and however they are and find ways to communicate 
and understand each other and be honest with each other about it, right? When you want it to be easy, rather than always being in the fight, always being in the uh, the holding back and the struggle and the resistance. So how do you get deleted from the National Registry of Wrong Relationships and, <laughs> and get on the easy love list? I will tell you. Number one, be clear and honest with yourself about what you want to feel and what you want a beautiful love to bring to you, right? So let's say you want things like fulfillment, compassion, happiness, joy, satisfaction, and love itself, Just get clear, get very clear that that is what you want in a relationship. And that's just step one. Don't think that just because you get clear that you want it, that's going to make sure that you act in a way that that aligns with it. Because that goes back to what I was talking about before. There's a lot of people out there who say they know what they want and then the way they behave is completely different. But the first thing you do have to do is get clear about it. And then the second thing is to just recognize how you already have all those things in your life that you think a relationship is supposed to bring you. Should I say that one again, Brian? Should I repeat that one? (laughs) So the second step, after you get really clear about what it is in your life that you want in your life, that you would want a relationship to bring what you want for yourself. And I gave some examples, fulfillment, compassion, happiness, joy, satisfaction, love, of course, all the things that you know that you want uh, a relationship to bring to you, get clear about that and then recognize that you already have all of those things. You already have it with or without a relationship. If you're, all, if you're in a relationship that you feel like doesn't have those things, the moment you start generating them, which you are absolutely capable of generating them on your own, then you raise up your vibration to knowing that you already have them. Right. So that's the second thing to get you on the the easy love list, because once you do that, you can let go of that forceful need for that person to be a certain way in order for you to be okay. Once you know that you are if I'm aligned with happiness, then I know that my practice is to generate happiness. I don't have to force you to make me happy. I don't have to hope something's going to happen in order to make me happy. Happiness is is something that I know is 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 a core value is an end goal is the ultimate is what i'm going for and i have the ability to generate it right now I, yes i can begin now i can begin generating joy right now just as a matter of my word and my choice that's what i choose to do i choose to be happy and i know that that sounds like toxic positivity like i'm forcing you to not feel your feelings not at all It's how often can I practice it and am I willing to let myself practice it as often as I can? Because there's sometimes where I'm going to have a hard time practicing it because I'm human, right? I'm I'm not going to always be able to generate it perfectly. But if I know that that's what I'm going for and that's what I want to create, I know that I can get, it's just like if I decided I wanted to work out, I'm not going to be working out 24 seven going hard with it. But I'm going to develop a practice of working out and doing it when I know that I can and being committed to it as much as I possibly can. And the more consistent and committed I am, the better my results will be. Right. And I let myself fail. I pick myself back up. I love myself through it. Let myself sometimes have days where I don't do it. But I always know that what I want to generate is exactly what I want to feel. And I get right back to that. It's like the workout for your emotions, for your heart, right? Number three, yeah, and that's number three, practice generating everything that you want to feel every day. So if I say fulfillment, compassion, happiness, joy, satisfaction, ease, and love are what I want in a relationship, I can practice it as much as I can every day if I can, as much as I possibly can. And like I said, that also means not making yourself wrong if you can't. It's a practice. Number four, explore what feeling really good means to you and only line up with those things. If you want to get off that struggle love registry, line up with what feels good to you. Only line up with what feels good to you. Get in integrity with your word by being what and who you say you want to be. That doesn't mean that you walk around like, I don't care about anything else. I'm happy-go-lucky and I don't see any of the ills of the world and I don't ever get sad 
So it doesn't mean that at all. What it means is that I um, am, am my default is to be in the exploration around what does feel good rather than what is often the case is the default is what do I need to complain about today? Or what do I need to figure out is going wrong today? What do I want to focus on that's not working? Right? Which is where we often tend to default to. If you're somebody who wakes up in the morning and the first thing you think is, Ugh, what's this day going to be about? <laughs> the invitation is to practice exploring what it means to wake up. What, what's going to feel good right now? This, you know, and you can, you can, some people are very, they go straight to it. Like, this is going to be a great day. I'm going to have a great day, but maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you're not at, I'm going to have a great day yet, but maybe you could be at, what can I do right now that I'll feel good as I get up this morning? It might be that I take a moment to meditate with myself. It might be that I jump up out of bed and do a little bit of exercise, a little bit of stretching. It might be that I eat breakfast right away. It might be that I cuddle my baby Whatever it is, it's that willingness to wake up and say, you know what, I'm, I'm waking up today to feel good. Doesn't mean everything's going to go my way. Things are going to go awry. Things are going to have their own way. We know from 2020, sometimes you just don't even know what's going to happen. But it's just our willingness to look for what feels good, look for what's working. Those of you who do yoga, I love doing yoga. A lot of yoga teachers will say, find what feels good as you're moving your body, stretching your body around. Life is the same way. As you're moving yourself through life, moving yourself around, find what feels good rather than defaulting to what feels bad, which is what we so often do. If you want to get off that struggle love registry, because you can stay on it. Right. Like, I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to force you off of it. You can you can absolutely stay on that struggle love registry. Right, Brian? We ain't trying to make people come off it. Uh, no. no, we're not in that business. We are in the business of invitation. And then number five, love yourself so much that anyone else's love becomes a wonderful side dish to all the love that you've already spread out before you. Right. They're like the mashed potatoes. To your, to your steak feast uh, of self-love. Way you beef, too. <laughs> way you beef, exactly. What goes good with way you beef? Do they serve the cream spinach with that as well? You know how when uh, you go yes. to the steakhouse, they little, do the cream yes, spinach? Yes, cream spinach. Yeah. You know, crispy fries. So yeah, awesome. right? Sweet. Let the people that you love, the romantic relationships, be your crispy fries. Uh, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Nice right? While you are, your self-love is the smorgasbord. And, you know, if we show, if we both, we're both showing up that way, then we, we always get to have the delights. We get to be the enjoyment. We get to be a supplement to someone else's life rather than a detriment. And then later on, you can add some whipped cream for your dessert. <laughs> Hello, kitty. <laughs> right? <laughs> who knows where it can go? So, yeah, and, you know, value people who can align with what you want to experience and let those who do not align go on about their business. If you are ready to get off the struggle of train, let those people go on about their business. Yes. Right? You don't have to Say force bye. them. Say bye. If they Say if bye. they need to go, don't chase anybody. Don't force anybody. Don't fight with nobody. It it makes no sense in this day of day and age to be in resistance around what somebody else wants to choose for themselves. Uh -huh. Let them choose it. Let them, you know, we don't have to, I always say we don't have to chess piece people in and out of our lives. You don't have to move people around. Just be in alignment with who you are and those who are for you will stick with you. And those who are not for you will go on about their business and it's okay. Let them do that. They might come back at some point or they might not, but you know, they have their own journey to take. Yeah. And that's how we get off the struggle love train. That's how we get off that registry, that 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 sign up sheet. What do you think, Brian? I like it. You like it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't need no struggle love. We don't need no struggle love. So let let's wrap it up. So stop waiting for someone to come along, save you from struggle love. You are the only one who can do so. If you want your name deleted from the National Registry of Wrong Relationships, be the love you seek right in this instant. And keep choosing it over and over again as often as you can, as often as you allow yourself to, you know, just as much as you possibly can. 
without making it wrong when you can't. Just choose it, choose it, choose it as much as you can. And that is that, honey. Right? I liked that topic. I had fun with that one. Who signed me up for Struggle Love? Who did that? I did that. (laughs) You know who signed you up. (laughs) Who keeps signing you up. And I say this especially for my ladies, my ladies in my circle who I love so much. But, you know, we often get around to this conversation in the circle and it and it goes back to, you know, how am I setting myself up for struggle and making things difficult for myself? We do form our experiences based on our thoughts and beliefs, even though we want to believe that it's the outside world that dic- that gets to dictate. It really is not. You know, it really is not. I think I, I don't know who said it, but pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. Um, we do get to choose how we navigate through this world. And and it's just the knowing that we get to choose it that separates us from those who don't know they can choose it. Not everybody knows they can choose it, right? And when you don't know you can choose it, you you are deserving of the compassion that that requires. But when you know you can choose it, you have a, a key to something that you know not very many people have. And that's that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love this. All right. So what do we want to talk about? I, want, I always want to tell everybody about the Epic Circle, online healing circle for women everywhere. Every Monday night, we as women will come together as a community and we cause personal transformation when it comes to communication, forgiveness, self-love, mother-daughter relationships, purpose, friendship, just all the tools we need to be as big as we were meant to be. Now, I, you know, Brian, I've been thinking about opening it up to men as well. Really? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I mean, sure. right? you think so? Yeah. I feel like the conversations could get pretty juicy if I did. I'm thinking about for the next collective, I might just open it up to both men and women. And, you know, see where it can go. Well, yeah, I mean, shoot. It can't Why hurt, not? right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Lord knows we need to communicate more often. All of our, all of us, all of us genders, we need to be in communication with each other, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So first session is free. Come out if you want to just check it out and then you can um, become a monthly member. And um, yeah, you can go to our meetup page. The meetup page is on meetup. It's called the Epic Circle and you can join and that way you'll know the schedule and you'll get the links to be able to come and join us. And that's that. And then there is also Celebrity Magazine, which I want you guys to all go and visit the website. Definitely subscribe to us on YouTube, Passion Purpose Living. My my Brian here is the editor in chief. He is not. You tr- you do, honey. You do. He he is not just my married man, Deus Ex Machina. He is a, a Renaissance man in his own right, an entrepreneur, and he is our papa of Solivity Magazine. So go on over and check out, check out the website and get to know us, get to know Solivity Magazine a little bit better. And you can follow us on Instagram at Solivity Magazine at Ask for Candy Podcast at Candy Love Coach. And I think that's it. Do you have anything that you want to announce, Brian? I know we have the December thing that's coming up. Yeah. Coming up on Saturday, December 12th at 1 PM featuring uh, the beautiful lady that was just on, including uh, New Year, Your New You, a mind, body, and soul makeover from the inside out. Be Twelve people there, and different things going on. So it's going to be a, a fabulous, fabulous event. Yeah. Um, many different disciplines are going to be talked about. So definitely want people to go and check that out. Um, I'll put the link in the. Uh, in the chat so that people can go uh, pre-register tickets go on sale uh, on December 5th. That's fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. We have a very special, I, I'm getting to interview a woman who does these Oracle cards. I'm very excited about that. So come if you want to, want to get a little bit of an Oracle reading, things like that. We've got a lot, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, those of you who've been following and watching and listening and all of that stuff, you know that we have some really fun shows and you know just a lot to offer as far as your self-care and and, and we have a, uh one of our hosts is saying hi candy who's that is that javi my javi uh, hi baby happy belated birthday to to my javier 
I hope you're doing well. I saw some video of you doing a little bit of salsa. You was working it out, Daddy. I uh, know. Right? Go, Poppy. Uh, yes. All right, my my loves. So don't forget to, su- to subscribe on YouTube. Also, subscribe to Ask for Candy on iTunes and Anchor. And you can email us, askforcandypodcast at gmail.com and send your questions and comments. They may be may even be upcoming topics. And I think that's that's all I got for today, Brian, unless you got anything else. I think I think that's enough. Do you think that we <laughs> Yeah? <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think they they, they they need to get get out of that struggle love. They're gonna need to go back and re listen to some of this. I hope so. I want you to go back and listen, bring out your journal, take some notes and you know, just just give it some consideration. And you know, I always want to say that I'm not one of those like it's not a zero sum game. It's like you know, how can I just be putting stuff into practice? Doesn't mean you have to be a perfect person. I am by no means anywhere close to perfectly practicing all the things that I preach, but I preach them because I myself need to hear them as well. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Don't speak nothing that you can't cash. Exactly. Is that the saying? Don't speak yeah. nothing that you can't catch. That's right. <laughs> well, it, it, it's really that your butt can't catch. Bug- <laughs> but you know. I got you. I got you. <laughs> right. We're we're of a certain age, a certain generation. That sounds like something our fathers would say. Mm-hmm. Don't write don't write checks that your ass can't cash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I was trying to be nice. You were trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Since, since this is truth giving, not Thanksgiving. Truth giving. It's truth giving. And we're going to say the truth today. Right? It, that's what it is, right? All right, my sweet love. So until next time, never forget that you are a love machine. If you ever start to feel like you aren't getting the love you need, just make more and then ask for candy. Mwah, 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 mwah. Hey. I love you. Bye now.